Well, good evening, everybody. It's Mary with Samson Lingers, and it is the last Sunday of 2018, and that means this is our last video of 2018. So, I do hope we're going to have a good evening and that you will enjoy the time. So, let me uh, refresh everything off to the right here. Hey, Karen, how are you tonight? I'm going to refresh my screen so that I can make sure that we're transmitting. That's always job one when you're doing a video. Make sure you're actually doing a video. Hi, Donna from Washington. How are you this evening? Hopefully you're getting ready for a new year. Hey, Karen. Jean hasn't checked in yet, maybe. Hey, Marianne. Hi, Nancy. There's Jean and Sharon and Janet and Bill. Hi, guys. Glad you could join me tonight. I appreciate that. Cake and coffee. Yummo. I'm uh, having to try to get back on the horse, as it were and get back to making sure I'm not eating like the fat person I was. But still am. I'm still a fat person on the inside. Let's just face that, okay? Hi, Rosie. Good to see you. Wet and cold. Yeah, it's wet and warm here, so we're, we're happy about that. Hi, Holly. Hi, Susan. Hey, Jean. Hi, Karen. Glad you could join me tonight on our last evening of 2018. Can you even believe that? I mean, that's crazy. Just crazy. Doing quite well. We had some sun, clouds still covering snow on the Cascades. You know, you you know you live in my in my dream place, right, Donna? I'm gonna move there one of these days. I swear I am. I don't know when. And well, frankly, I don't know how. Hi, Karen. Yeah, and Stephanie and Carol. Yeah, I don't I don't know how I'll get moved there, but I am. One of these days, going to do that. All righty, guys. Let's take a look. This is the card that I gave you the sneak peek of this morning. Um, it's a birthday card. You can tell because it says happy birthday on the front. Um, here's the inside that we're going to make tonight. This is a Stamparatus card for you, so I hope you all have a Stamparatus, and if you don't, I hope you will be getting one soon because it's really quite awesome. All right, and then we have a envelope, obviously, duh. And this is the new Happiness Blooms DSP here, which is really fun. It's very colorful, very, um, it's just a very cheerful paper set. I like it quite a bit, very primary with the colors. The um, stamp set that we're using is called Piece of Cake, and it is a photopolymer stamp, and I apparently have ink on it. Um, but you can see it's got a bunch of cakes of different varieties. I like to think that regardless of the frosting, they're all chocolate of some sort on the inside because really what's the point of cake if it isn't chocolate? I'm just throwing that out there. Um, and it has quite a few wonderful little sentiments. And it has sentiments for both birthdays and weddings. So that's kind of fun. It also actually is bundled in the new catalog with the, um, here I'll take it out of the packaging because that'll be a lot easier to see it maybe, the Cake Builder Punch. Now I did not use this on this card, but it's very handy. It cuts out the stand and all of the cake shapes, so that's kind of cool. All right. And to finish it off, to add in, we're going to use the Celebrate You Thinlets from the annual catalog, the Celebrate die. You can tell because it's the Celebrate die. All right. Hey, Robbie. Hi, Shirley. Uh, did you know if you have brown eyes, you should eat a piece of chocolate every day? So, you know, Rosie, I did not know that. I'm hoping that without having brown eyes, I can still eat chocolate without making them brown. Or maybe I wouldn't even care. I will take brown eyes if I can have chocolate cake every day. All right, let us commensurate, shall we? Okay, I've got some cardstock already here. All of these will be in the blog tomorrow. So I have a Whisper White envelope and my piece of DSP for the envelope flap. Hopefully I won't screw something up and cut that inadvertently. I have pre-cut two of the Celebrate You Thinlet dies. One is in sparkle glimmer paper and one is in basic black and we're gonna make a little a little stack of those right there. Hi, Llewellyn. Hi, Brooke. Ah, oh, is Amy on? Hi. All right, I've got two little pieces of the Happiness Blooms DSP and their mats. And I have two pieces of Whisper White. These are both three and seven eighths by five and one eighth. The front one is embossed, I've already done that. It's embossed in the Oh My Stars teeth 
Remember my tip, my tip. If you need a three and seven eighths by five and an eighth piece of cardstock, I like to cut it at four inches by five and a quarter, do the embossing, and then cut down to size so that you still maintain a true, a true size for your card front or whatever you're doing. And then a couple of uh, basic black mats and my pineapple punch card base. All right, let us go, shall we? All right, first is just some gluing. We're going to um, glue this card front to its mat. Now you could, of course, I suppose, use the debossed side, but I like the embossed side. And I picked this because it looks kind of like fireworks to me. And so it goes nicely and coordinates sort of with the, uh, with the paper that I chose. And I know that my paper has flowers on it. I know that because it's happiness blooms and it's a flower suite. But in Mary's little world this time, these are fireworks for parties. See, for, for birthdays. Mary, could I ask if you would make a video featuring the lace dynamic embossing folder? Certainly. Certainly, I can do that. I uh, actually, my card tomorrow, let's see, not tomorrow because that's this card, but let's see, Tuesday or Wednesday, depending on when I post it, I do actually use the Lace Dynamic Teeth, and it is beautiful, but I will try to get a card together for a Sunday video so that we can, we can do, use that. All right, so all I'm doing now is just uh, adhering these little panels to their mats and sticking my finger to the mat, to the paper. There we go. This is very mindless, I'm sorry. Maybe I should have done it ahead of time. All right, you guys realize what is coming in like three days? And, and unlike Christmas, <laughs> I do know that in three days, or four days, depending on how you want to count them, Let's just say this, on the 3rd of January, which is however many days away from now, we will be getting our first look at folks getting their pieces and parts and all of the 2019 Occasions Catalogs goodies that they've been looking for. Okay, so this is how we're going to adhere these to the card front now. I think I might want to put that one like that. Uh, no, actually, I like that right there. All right. And this, you can see I'm just measuring ever so minutely because it is like the space shuttle. It is that critical. By which to mean it isn't. We just want it to be about right. The TLAR method. That looks about right. Like that. <laughs> You like watching me glue pieces together? Uh, do you also like to add water to concrete and watch it dry? Or paint walls and watch that dry? Because surely that's how exciting this is. All right. I'm really just kind of eyeballing this. I want it to be equal distant ish and kind of look like I had some thought process when I did this. Maybe I didn't. We don't know. It's entirely possible that I had I gave no thought to this whatsoever. It could happen. And I know that because that's how I roll. I frequently don't. If you if it sounds like I've stepped away from the camera, it's because I did because I just realized I didn't have any paper for my um, sentiment. All right, so we'll let those dry for just a second. The TLAR. Oh yes, that's a classic military <laughs> it's a classic military acronym it really is okay so all I'm doing now is I'm making a little stack um, just to give a little depth to my thinlet so all I'm going to do is adhere these together with some liquid glue and yes of course I could have used adhesive sheets but I'm just going to be straight up with you guys I like doing it with glue because it lets me have a little time to Recover if I put it on wrong with those adhesive sheets if you put it on crookedy guess what you're there, baby You there you there and then you got to do all sorts of regrouping and recutting and no I like my liquid glue 
I've gotten pretty good at it. It's what I'm used to. If y'all are good with liquid, with liquid sheets, liquid sheets, that is not a thing. If y'all are good with the uh, adhesive sheets, then by all means, you should use them. Let me uh, dig out my, sorry for my large arm in the way there, people. Where in the world, where in the world is my tweezers? I need my tweezers here. There we go. See, a person should really never clean their craft area. Certainly not right before a video because I cleaned, which meant I immediately didn't know where anything was. But the good news is, is within mere hours, I'll probably have it all borkified right back up. So all you want to do with this is just take your time a little bit and get everything lined up. All we're doing is stacking. You can, if you want, you can actually offset that a little bit, and then you would have a sentiment with a shadow, which is also cool. It just isn't what I want on this particular card. So that's another good reason to use liquid glue is I can still move those around a little bit to get them lined up so that I don't have lined up, lined up, shadow, lined up, lined up, shadow. Okay. All right, now I'm just going to use a little more liquid glue. My sweater is in fact sort of color coordinated, Jean, you are correct. You know, I suppose if I was really a good video person, I would one, paint my fingernails, two, I would probably actually color coordinate my clothes. Maybe I'd even put makeup on and do my hair and then start the video with my face. But that probably will never happen because uh, I'm just not going to do that. I'm sorry, guys. I love you, but no. There will be no hair and makeup on the weekends if I can help it. Okay. So now I'm going to put this roughly centered between the two pieces and a little bit lower just because I like it better there. And there we go, there's that. So set that aside, put our glue on, and then we're going to make the second portion of our sentiment. And I'm using the happy birthday sentiment from Piece of Cake. And we're going to stamp it in a lovely lipstick. Lovely lipstick on a little piece of Wisp of White. Y'all, I'm sorry to report the Finney Meister hasn't been feeling very good the last couple of days. We um, changed his food. You know, that big study came out, I don't know, not uh, a few a few dozen weeks ago, I suppose, that said that if, you, you know, if you're feeding your dog grain-free food, that is bad. Grain-free food is bad for dogs. Now... I suppose if you have a dog who has some kind of an allergy to grain products and can't have it, then that's one thing. But if you're doing it like I was, which is just because it sounded like a really good idea because dogs eat meat and so they might not like grain, which is, a, is kind of not the brightest reasoning. Um, they said that it turns out that there is a very significant lack of nutrients for do that dogs need. And my friend Chris could tell me exactly what it is, but I can't. But there's something in there, and it actually causes them to have heart problems. So we had been feeding Finn grain-free food. You can see what I'm doing, I think, without me telling you. So I'm just fussy cutting these two words out. Um, we'd been feeding him grain-free food, and once we realized that that was happening, we changed. We, we said, okay, we'll, we'll go away from that. So we changed and had no issues. We got, we did the change like you're supposed to, you know, a little bit at a time until finally we were all on that. Well, then we went to Tractor Supply again to buy the food. And when we bought the next bag, we bought lamb and rice instead of chicken and rice. Same make, model, same brand. Um, and for some reason, his little body does not apparently care for lamb. So... The last three nights in a row, we have gotten up no fewer than five times each night to let him go out and either go to the bathroom or throw up. I um, think he's maybe doing some combination of both, the poor guy. And you guys know, we've talked about the fact that the Finnmeister is 
a sleeper. When he goes to bed, he's in bed. He's done. He's asleep. I can count on two hands the number of times since we got him two and a half years ago that I've had to get up and let him out in the night. And and so to have to do that five times tells me something is wrong. So today we went and we replaced that with good old chicken and rice feed. And he's on real chicken and rice food for a day or two to try to let his stomach settle out. It's very odd, though, because he acts perfectly normal all day long. He plays. He wants to play tug. He wants to race after the ball. He goes for his walks with me. He wants to go ride if we get in the car. But... He gets in bed, and about an hour and a half later, he's ready to go out. And about an hour and a half after that, he's ready to go out again, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So hopefully, y'all keep your fingers crossed that we've got that one knocked now, because I I need to sleep. <laughs> okay, so I'm just taking my basic black Stampin' Right marker and giving these a little edge. And I, I've told you, I like to do this when I don't want when I need something to kind of um, pop out the edges of my of of small dies, okay? So I've got everything matted on black on the card, so I picked black there. Now I'm going to pull out my mini Stampin' Dimensionals. Yeah, I hope so too, Nancy. Thank you, Robbie. He he does really really like chicken and rice, the real stuff. I mean, you know what dog doesn't? I mean, that's the weird part is he's not off his food. He's not not asking for people food. He, he's doing everything normal except sleeping correctly. And he's not even, even when he is asleep, it isn't even right. You know, he likes to sleep on his back, and he hasn't really been doing that. When I get up, he's laying on his chest, and that's that's not him. He's not relaxed. So yes, I too hope he feels better very soon. All right, so now all we're gonna do is we're going to just put these on here ever so cleverly, like so. You saw I put some mini Stampin' Dimensionals on the back. Always looking for an opportunity to add a dimensional or three or 12. Okay, I think that's gonna look about right. We'll put it right there. All right. We'll unpeelify it, and then we will get to the inside where the fun is. All right, let's do that. I love the little fonts in this set. Um, it's very cute. It's just a cute set. And I like all the different cakes. That's always fun. Cake is fun. All right. Oh, don't stick. Don't stick down there. I'm not ready for you to stick there. Okay. All right, there we go. That's the card front, folks. So it's done very easy, real quick. Really lets that uh, DSP pop. Get it? Pop? Fireworks? Pop? Okay. Never mind. Never mind. That wasn't so funny, maybe. Okay. All right. Now, on to... Yes, I did say dimensionals, Robin. Did I get an atomizer for Christmas and start using essential oils? I did not. So, no, there's no essential oil issues for him. Um, I have a mister thing, um, like... Mm, like Glade. It's a Glade thing, but we've had that for several, several, several months now. And it's in the kitchen away from where he sleeps. Um, and if it uses any oils, I don't think they're essential. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. All right. So I'm pulling out my Stamparatus or Stampopotamus, depending on your bent. And we're going to use all of these here for a second. Now, this is going to use both my Stamparatus and the acetate window, the sheet window, from my Stampamajig, okay? And that's going to help me get my cake lined up, let me tell you. Hi, Mary, I can see you, but no sound. Okay, check your computer, Lenny, because I think everybody else can hear me. If anybody can't hear me, give me a thumbs down or, you know, something like that. Okay, so this is what we're aiming at. This is all stamped in tuxedo black, and you can see it's roughly centered. The way to do this is to start by lining up your th my way up, and I use the stamp wrap, the Stampamajig acetate to be sure that things are going to um, set uh, straight one on top of the other. Okay, because the first time I did it, it really didn't, and so I had to 
ridify it. All right. So you can see where I already had my um, cake stand. And that still looks about right. One of the good things about having the magnet sheet and the foam pad is you can get up into the corner. So I always try to put my my panels right up into the corner of the Stamparatus. That gives you a really good starting point every single time. So when I made the uh, the previous card, the first card, I just left it on here. All right. So. But here's how you use this little device. You make sure that your card is up in the corner. And of course you can't use that magnet until you get everything down. All right, so we're gonna ink up the stand. And first I'm going to stamp the stamp -a jig window. And I'm gonna make sure that that looks straight and it looks straight enough. If it wasn't, if it wasn't straight enough, I would clean off my stamp, reposition it, and try again. But I'm pretty happy with that. Okay, so we're gonna stamp the panel now. So, ink it up. And stamp. Now here's, here's kind of a piece of the puzzle. Leave the image on the stamp -a jig sheet, okay? Because you're going to use it to help line everything up. Hey, Jacqueline. There you go, uh, Lenny. Rosie had a good idea. All right, so making sure that the ink is dry. I'm going to put my stamp of Majig acetate back on. You can see those two images line up perfectly. And then what I have is my second cake image. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to line it up on the stamp of Majig sheet. Okay? Just like that. I'm sticking my head in the way because I want to get it at least kind of close so that I don't have to do it 75 times to show you that. So then you pick it up, ink it, stamp the stamp of my jig, and that looks good, right? So if it looks good there, when I pick up the stamp of my jig sheet and stamp it onto the panel, it should also be good there, right? Boom, chakalaka. Now, I'm going to leave that on those because you never know. If I screw it up, I want to be able to get it back easy. And I'm going to use my other panel. Uh, the, another joy of the stamp apparatus. Put my stamp -a jig sheet back. And then I have the little candles image. And I'm going to line it up right on the top. I'm getting my head in the way, sorry. Okay. And I'll pick it up. Ink it. And I don't like that. I want it a little more perfect. I mean, it doesn't have to be perfect perfect because it's really not it's really not the space shuttle, but I like it to look like the, uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not magic. Those aren't ever going to be floaty. So I'm just going to clear off my, my stamped candles and I'm going to put this back on, stick my head a little more in the screen so that I can really actually see what I'm looking at. There we go. Let's see how that goes, shall we? try again. Yeah, this is a good this is a good little technique. Okay, that's close enough cuz I can I can fudge that. It's a good thing. I actually think the stamp of jig acetate ought to be a stamparatus accessory. Don't you? I do. Okay, so now we're going to ink up and do our candles. 
and they came out fine. I'm going to leave the candles on there because I'll come back for them here in just a minute. But I'm going to go ahead and flip my panel. And we're going to put the sentiment on. All right, so let me pull that out. And it's kind of a fun little sentiment. It says, count the good times, not the candles. And in a departure from everything has to be perfectly lined up in the middle. I'm going to go ahead and use my this because about now is when I would screw it up and have it be on sideways and backwards and upside down. And yes, I know it's photopolymer and nobody should be able to screw that up. But people, have you met me? Have you met me? I can screw that up. We're going to do that in lovely lipstick. Oh, that's a good idea, Jacqueline. Putting a grid on your stampamajig. I like that. Let me wipe that off. Because that's a smudge looking for a spot right there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It sure is. I don't know. Does that look straight? It looks straight from where I'm at. It's close enough, I think. Yeah, it's straight. All right. So let's go ahead and ink that again. Wipe that again. Man, I'm a piggy wig. No kidding, Mary. Make sure that's up in the corner. And there we go. Okay. So now we can pick this up and set it aside. And then let's color some cake frosting. Here we go. All right. Now, I've used some blends and a Stampin' Write marker, but you could use whatever you like. And I'm going to, actually, I'm going to take my little black marker and I'm just going to touch this spot right there just to make it look like those candles aren't floating. Now, I've got my, this is the Light Calypso Coral. And I'm just going to decorate this with these colors that are part of the DSP. And you could do whatever you like. I just think these are pretty. And I would never say that a mere one day, practically, in the winter, I'm already looking for winter, but I'm kind of am. And then I've got the light pineapple punch. Did I say looking for winter? I meant looking for summer. Or at least some springiness, because it's a little dreary. I'm not going to lie, it's been dreary here. Wet and, and warmer than it ought to be, which I am not complaining about at all. But the wetness could certainly go away. So I've got, I used my um, light pineapple punch there. And then I'm going to take the dark pineapple punch blend and I'm just going to kind of go on the edges. I'm really just trying to make a little bit of depth here. Not a lot. I mean, it's, it's a card, right? We all know it's not a picture. I don't think anybody thinks that this is ever going to be a picture of a cake. Certainly not with my inexpert coloring. All right. I like that. And then I'm going to take my... Let's see. What colors should I use for those dots? I think I'm going to take my um, Calypso Coral and light and dark, and we're going to color some of these little dots. Like that, that's the light one. And then we'll do dark. And then let's do the light on some of these stripes. Wouldn't it be nice if cakes were really this easy to decorate? I mean, serious. And then I'm going to take the dark pineapple punch to do the other stripe. Because why not? It's obviously lemon 
Hello. But the inside is what? Yeah, that's right, chocolate. And then I'll just use the dark pineapple punch for that. And I'm going to use, hey, Roz, welcome. Yeah, Eunice, it's time. Yeah, Brooke, we're going to have rain for the rest of the week. Because, you know, why not? I'm just going to use the uh, fine point of my lovely lipstick and color those candles like that. Now, if you were a better colorer than I am, you could use your Stampin' Blend for that, but, oh, oh no, that would be really bad. All right, and now we're just going to adhere this to its basic black mat. Look at that, I'm almost at the end of this bottle. I'm going to eke out the last freaking drop, though. All right, have you guys got your black eyed peas and your collards all ready for Tuesday? Now, I am not going to say I we eat them every year on the first, and obviously I'm not a rich person, but I always think, how bad could it have been if I didn't eat the black eyed peas and collards? Just throwing that out there. Never tempt fate. All right. By which philosophy I ought to enter the Publishers Clearinghouse sweepstakes and buy every lottery ticket every week, and I do not do either. But somehow, it's a heck of a lot easier to just eat greens and beans, certainly, than it is to enter all those things where then they get your email address and your passwords and all sorts of bad stuff. All right. So there we go. And then I will use this opportunity. Oh, of course you don't like those, Amy. You're such a picky eater. You're so picky. Hey, that's okay. That's okay. Tempt fate, if you will. Tempt fate. I'm not going to. Also, we like it here. We like us some collard greens. Especially with a honey-baked ham bone in the collard greens and some ham in the black-eyed peas. Oh, baby, that is so good. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Okay, I got my Stampin' Dimensionals in. Yay! And we'll get these on, and then we'll make a quick envelope. What's the time? Oh, we're doing great on time. We're doing great on time. Of course, I'm having a little trouble with the dimensionals. Why? I don't know why. So, we went and saw Aquaman. Have you guys seen Aquaman? If you haven't seen Aquaman, I'm going to just say go see Aquaman. Aquaman was my favorite of the superheroes. I don't know why. I think probably because they rode seahorses, and I thought that was pretty cool. Also, they can talk to dolphins. He can talk to dolphins, so I'm down with that, too. But it was quite good. And then we went and saw Bumblebee yesterday. And it was quite good, too. I absolutely have a Bumblebee on my current and forever Christmas list. I would like to have Bumblebee. Okay, there we go. One happy birthday card with the new piece of cake stamp set. So let me make the envelope. This is what it looks like. I'm going to show you how we did that. And by we, of course, I mean I. It's the royal we. Because, you know, I can be a royal we if I want to be a royal we. A royal we we? Mm -hmm. Okay, no, not a royal we we. Oh, Brooke, come on, people. You've just never had it the way Mary makes it. I promise. You'd be smucking them down. All right, so in goes my medium whisper white envelope. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to put the candles right up against the bottom and the edge and pick it up. But I'm not going to do it with those magnets there like that. Hello. Okay, so you can see I'm still a little bit <laughs> colored. 
Good thing I wanted them there, huh? All right. And so you stamp, and that one's imperfect, so it, this will never see the light of day. But we'll go ahead. You know what? I'm just not going to do it, people. Not going to do it. Not going to do it. I'm getting another envelope. Because that annoyed me. It sure did. Mm hmm All right. So now we're going to put our envelope back. What, what mistake did I just make, people? That's right. I didn't figure where my envelope was. I do know it was all the way up against the top, though. So we're gonna be we're gonna be close. We'll be fine. We'll be fine. What larva is in a yellow-eyed pea? Oh, I don't even want to know about larvas. Just don't. Mm mm. Mm mm. Not in the black-eyed peas. No. Okay. So after I make my first one, I'm gonna hinge step down like so, and ink, and stamp, and ink, and hinge step, and stamp. I'll move my magnet, which just attached itself to the other magnet. Okay. Hold on, people. I have to use my superhuman finger strength. There we go. Okay. All right. Hinge again. And you can see what I'm doing. I'm just going all the way down. Creating a little design. And then I'm going to fill it in with a heart, which is easy peasy. One more. Uno mas. One more. Okay. And we'll just set that aside because we're gonna we're gonna free stamp the heart because it's pretty easy. I'm gonna cover up that tuxedo black because that is oof, a smudge looking for a spot, baby. A smudge. Looking for a spot. I'm not reading anything about larvas. None. You can't make me read it. I'm not going to read it. So there. Nah. Not going to do it. Nope. Not going to do it. Because by the time you cook them, and cook them and cook them, they're dead anyway. It's just a little protein. It's good for you, man. Okay. This little heart is also from the Piece of Cake stamp set. And I'm just picking it up. And I'm just going to stamp it between each one, like that. One more. Okay, we'll set that aside, close that up. Same reason as last time. Fix this one little heart that just had to be perverse, because why not? You've heard the saying, the perversity of an inanimate object. And we'll take a little bit of our dispa dispa. Oh, hey, Amy, in some places, bugs are a delicacy. Maybe not in Atlanta, but in some places they are. So don't, don't be a, don't be buggedous. <laughs> That's what, bug prejudice, buggedous, yeah. Okay. So I've just put my liquid glue on, and I'm going to put a little piece of the Happiness Blooms DSP. And we're going to fussy cut that and be done. Y'all, with the advent of the 2019 Cajuns catalog, please don't miss out on my bundles. They're a very good deal for you. And we'll let you gather up all of a suite, or most of a suite. Uh, the All My Love suite is really quite large. It's got All My Love and Meant to Be in it. And, oh, by the way, those are the tutorials for January. So, um, order in January. Actually, if you order the bundles, I'm going to send you the tutorials. So, you might want to think about that. Just think that through. All right, take a look. It'll be, It's all on my blog. All right, so there we go. One piece of cake. Kind of see what I did there because it was really pretty easy. A piece of cake birthday card, 
with the Celebrate Youth Inlets from the Annual Catalog, A Little Happiness Blooms for the DSP, and the Oh My Stars Teeth on the front, and then an obviously chocolate cake with some pastel coloring frosting on the outside, on the inside, the outside of the inside. All right, folks, I hope you guys have a wonderful and very safe New Year's Eve and a wonderful New Year's Day. Please eat some bug ridden black eyed peas and some non bug ridden collard greens on Tuesday. All right. I will see you guys in 2019. Thanks so much. Bye bye.